Hello and welcome back. I've taken quite a while away to make videos on YouTube, but I thought it was time to come back. I quite enjoyed making them in the past, documenting racing in the UK and general cycling bits. Now there's a slight difference in videos now. Last year I relocated to Greece. We've been here now for, I think, 10 months now. And I guess I've been adapting to, to life here in Greece. So I want to sort of go through in this video what that, what that was like. like. What was it like to, to move several thousand kilometers away from the UK, relocate in a completely different country? Also, what was it like cycling here? So you really found yourself at the channel because of the cycling content and if you're like me cycling takes up a large portion of your life so finding the, the bits about Greece that, that suit my cycling training was really important and it, if you're deciding to come here either for a holiday or considering a, a training camp or even moving here I just want to share the bits that I found that you know, I found the best and uh, you know, I guess the best bits and the worst bits about living here in Greece. So watch along. So I guess we could start with why we moved, why we relocated from the UK to Greece. Greece has a good reputation for its food, its culture and its weather. However, it's not quite the case financially and economically. So our reasons for moving here were of our own, they were personal, but I'm willing to share them. It was pretty simple. The UK was getting, was getting busy. There, there was, you know, as you might see in the news at the moment, there's a build up in violence and separation and then if you top all of that with the fact that the UK doesn't have the best climate we experience in the UK probably more rain and more cloudy weather than we do sunny there were several options on the table for countries to locate to however we have family and friends here in Greece my wife being Greek so it was a pretty easy option Now, I think when most people picture Greece, they picture scenes like this. However, <laughs> it's not always the case. There is sandy Greece with nice beaches and idyllic locations. However, for the most part, Greeks and the locals live in big cities, concrete jungles. We are, <laughs> Some of those people. We moved to a, a city called Patra, which is in Western Peloponnese or Western Greece on the mainland. It is the third largest city in Greece, second to Thessaloniki and Athens, of course. Now, Patra is a pretty large city, it's twice as big as the city I come from in England, Southampton. And now, Although it's a concrete jungle, it's a big city, it doesn't mean it doesn't have those idyllic spots. For example, at the moment, I'm cycling in a suburb, an area of Patra, which is just that. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Greece is littered with independent restaurants and cafes, which means that Places like this are great, they're perfect. Little spots pop up, you can come down with the family and get some really good food. Now this brings me on to my next topic. 
which is the Greek cuisine and got to admit it is one of the reasons why I was drawn to moving here and why I wasn't opposed to moving to this country. Now the Greece is famously known for its good food and its healthy diet. It has, uh, it has a top spot on one of the healthiest nations in the world because of its nutrition, because of its cuisine. Obviously most people are used to what you see on the islands, which is the Greek salads, etc. Uh, the Suvlaki, the Pritiyiros. However, there is another side to it that you get to see as a local. And that's things like the bakeries, a particular favourite of mine. Obviously, Greece and the Greeks, they, they love their healthy food and this is great. However, from what I've noticed, they also have quite the sweet tooth and that favours me. I, I like that. The bakeries here are fantastic. You'll find independent little bakeries on every street, in every community, in every district of town. and. They, God, their imagination runs wild with their creations. You can walk in there with any craving, sweet or savoury, and you're guaranteed you're going to find something that's going to get your fix. Obviously, Greece is pretty known for some of its pastries, Spanakopita, Tidopita, but there are many more than that. My particular favourite, you might see posting on Instagram with fairly often, is huge ring sugar donuts. And they're my absolute favourite. Obviously, back in the UK, we're not strangers to, to tasty food. However, that usually comes in the form of ultra processed fast food. And it's quite a, a welcome relief to, to live in a city where we only have one McDonald's and he only opened this year. The locals fought against it. However, corporate McDonald's worked their way into it. However, apart from that, there are no fast food restaurants. All you have is souvlaki places. And it's quite nice to understand that the Greek nation actually consider picky years as junk food, as their fast food. Um, however, this is not ultra processed. It's meat that's cooked fresh in front of you. And great, it is, in my eyes, it's pretty healthy. And okay, we like that. I think the food culture is partly influenced by another factor and that's the weather so that's my next topic to talk on is that UK we left the UK because it was it was pretty miserable the weather was bleak all the time it seemed I know at the moment the UK is having a hot spell and it's, from what I hear it's pretty hot there however it doesn't last here in Greece, it's sunny most of the year. Um, it's a misconception that Greece is, you know, 30, 40 degrees sunny all year round. However, winters do get cold, they do get dark, and weather is extreme here on both ends. When it's sunny, it's hot. However, when it rains, when there's a storm, Koi, you know about it. Um, we once had a a thunderstorm with hailstones. God, they're as big as my fist and they're, 
<laughs> it's all dent dented and ruined our car a bit. However, at the moment, we are in the midst of summer and it's currently, it is about half past seven, eight o'clock in the morning. And I find myself cycling and it's just still 30 degrees, 32 degrees at this time in the morning. And any Greek local cyclists will know that this does seem nice on the surface. It, it seems quite pleasant that, you know, you, you have, I think Greece has 250 days of sun a year. And if you're cycling training, got your uh, hands up there, it's fantastic. However, <laughs> the downside to that is that if you want to cycle during the day, or even late morning, early afternoon, it's pretty much impossible. Um, at the moment, in August and July, temperatures reach as high as up to 45 degrees at times. So trying to cycle in that, yeah, it's impossible. You can't do it. So you are very limited to your timings. And I generally have to get up and cycle between, I have to leave the house between half past six, seven o'clock in the morning to go do my sessions. Um, and if I do a long, long ride on a Sunday, the weekend, it's like three, four hours long, I end up not getting back until midday. And yeah, that is horrible. And then again, this brings me on to my next topic. If you are a local cyclist here in Patra, you'll understand exactly what I mean. And I get the understanding from some people that this is the same across most of the country. Before we moved here, I imagined Greece to have yeah, some of the best cycling locations in the world. And don't get me wrong, it does. However, it's very limited in its roads. There's two, I see there's two sides to Greece's landscape. There's the sea, you know, the coastal part of Greece and the mountainous part of Greece. And as a cyclist, this limits you because there is only two ways to go. You can either follow coastal roads or go up into the mountains. Obviously, depending on what your training entails, you, are, you can be limited to the routes that you take. And there also is this problem that unless you go on the main cycling routes on the coast or in the mountains, some of the routes you can take, some of the roads that you find to cycle on, they can be very, fairly rural. Um, and Greece has quite a problem with stray dogs. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I post, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I post fairly often about this problem. Um, I actually had a video that went fairly viral some dogs chasing me up a climb. I was trying to do some threshold of a climb and they ended up chasing me and God, oh, it was yeah, not a great experience. And this happens regularly if you go off the beaten track. So this means as a cyclist, you generally have to stick to the same routes all the time. Occasionally I'll treat myself and go somewhere different. I'll try something new, but in my experience, it doesn't work out too great. If, you've, if you follow me on Strava, you'll notice that I do the same route nearly every single day. I switch it up sometimes. Generally, there's three routes I generally do. But there's one in particular that I do nearly every single day. And it's an out and back. You'll notice just a minute ago that I spun around. It's about 20k to the next town, little village. We spin around there, come back. However, it is a... 100 kilometer out and back loop. It is a great for training. It's pretty flat most of the way. So if you're trying to hit some solid intervals, some solid blocks of efforts, you, you, there is nowhere better. And I'd be interested to hear anyone else's experiences with this in other parts of Greece. Uh, I, have a, I know, know a guy north of Athens, he gives me a similar story. It's mountains or a pretty flat, straight route out and back. Now I have one final topic I want to touch on and 
that's how well I've been welcomed to the country. I spoke about how I find the country, but how others have taken me in is fantastic. Um, obviously my wife is Greek, she's moved back here after 10 years in the UK. She was great at immersing me and teaching me the culture. However, everyone here, for the most part that is, has been unbelievably welcoming. Um, shout out to guys like Yanis at Wadbox, to my local gym in Hatra. It's so welcoming. They, they introduce me to the city, they try and teach me the language, um, something that I'm still learning every day. You know, the cycling community here is huge. I've met some pretty cool riders. Most of the time I meet them when I'm out riding. I'll be cycling like I am today. Everyone rides on the same route here. And we'll be up bump into guys and get talking. So, yeah, just a big thank you to everyone that's helped us sort of integrate into this new life. And uh, cycling here isn't like in the UK. I like to compete and competing here is very different. The system is very different. Um, attaining your racing license, UCI license, it's a very different task. Um, the racing is different as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks everyone that's helped us. And I'll see you in the next video, I hope.